Hey, everyone, it's good to see you today. Uh, James and Jenny here in, in our home, and uh, we're glad that you're joining us today uh, by video. Uh, it's good to see you, everyone. Okay. Well, we've been um, in, in the study on um, uh, why do I need the church, and that's been a good study since we were in this day and time that a lot of people go, going, man, I don't need church. Church is irrelevant. Uh, church is obsolete in our in our um uh, time and so um, so we've been looking at several things uh, before we get into the study today uh, let me remind you we've been using uh, this book the Bible studies for life and uh, this is the last study in this uh, book okay um, there will be some new books available tomorrow at old st. George Baptist Church uh, on uh, what's tomorrow August 30th and uh, you'll be able to pick some of those up um, the next series that's in this the next teaching series that's in here deals with a new look at the Ten Commandments and being after uh, God's own heart uh, we will not be continuing in that study on on this platform here uh, that Jenny and I have been teaching um, the last two or three studies that we have done um, here online but also in person uh, oftentimes mentioned about spiritual gifts and serving according to your spiritual gifts and so what we're going to do we're going to we're going to uh, teach um, and what we normally do in our class anyway when we're teaching we usually uh, teach some thematic things um, and so this one is uh, what, uh, our book study what do you do best in the body of Christ by this fellow named Bruce Bugby right there. B-U-G-B-E-E. -E. Go to BruceBugby.com. And um, um, you who are joining us by video, uh, you, you can go ahead and order a copy of that. BruceBugby.com. I've been telling you it's about 12 bucks. Uh, actually, it's um, a little over 10 now. And uh, so um, it's 10, about 10 50, 10 60, something like that. Um, you know, but so it's so $11 and, and some change to get you uh, shipping and handling. It gets, it gets it to you. Now, if you're a member here at Old St. George Baptist Church and you come here and we're going to have copies of that. Uh, one or two of you gave us some money this past week, and we're going to give you your money back. Uh, church is giving money back. What a new idea, right? And we're going to give you your money back, and uh, we're going to uh, just give you a, a copy of that and um, uh, and so forth. I talked to our Sunday school director, and we're going to take it out of the Sunday school um, literature stuff since we're using it for Sunday school. And uh, that's one reason uh, churches give tithes and offerings, because it helps with the education of our church and uh, providing materials and, uh, and so forth. Now, our light just went out. Let me turn our light back on so we can have some good light. Hey, look at there. Uh, the miracle of the switches, right? And so, but anyway, and so uh, you want to get a copy of that. And uh, we're going to we're gonna probably order about 25 copies, have them available. And you want to get those. We'll start in a couple of weeks, okay? What you do best uh, in the body of Christ. Now, we've been talking about what, why do I need the church? And that's been the story that and, and, the, and the theme that we've been looking at for the last uh, five weeks, six weeks, counting today. Um, the, the first session we, we looked at, uh, the topic was that the uh, reason uh, we need the church is because we are joined together. When we become a Christian, we become part of the body of Christ. Paul uses the analogy of a family, and so he says we belong to each other, we're joined together in Christ, and not only in the church worldwide, but then that's also one reason we ought to be joining the local church to be able to work and support and encourage one another there. Also, the next topic we talked about was that the, uh, we need the church because we get to pray for one another. If no one, if you in, never interacted with anyone, uh, you wouldn't know how to pray for them, and they would not know how to pray for you. And so uh, we get to pray for one another, praying fervently and uh, for one another. And that's what James says in um, in his book of James, uh, chapter five, that we ought to be praying fervent uh, for one another. Uh, then we talked about supporting one another and encouraging one another and strengthening one another and that's what we do because we all go through rough times and we all need somebody to encourage us we need somebody to walk alongside of us and support us and then pour into us to strengthen us and we get to do that best as a as a body and and, and a group of believers some of you've got close friends that that you hang out all the time and when something's going wrong in your life or you are down or whatever they come alongside of you they encourage you they they lift you up a little bit when you bearing down up beneath the weight and they strengthen you so then you can carry on and that's exactly the picture that we are to have of a church okay and uh and and so forth now today we're going to talk about that it that we get to stand together in spiritual battle we have uh we we not only live in the physical realm here uh flesh and blood like we are here um but we also live in a spirit realm because we're also spirit and uh, and so um we have a uh, a problem 
problem uh, that, that's going on, not really a problem, but because Jesus Christ took care of our problem for us. The question is, are we going to live with his solution or not, right? And so, um, anyway, so so we get to stand together in a spiritual battle. Let me, let me tell you the story that's on page 153 in our student guide. And um, to get us into our study for today, okay? Uh, there were some people who put their houses up for sale, and they they loved it. They um, and they went through and they they fixed stuff in the yard. They 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 put a new coat of paint. They cleaned the carpet. Uh, everything you have to do to sell your house. Some of you know exactly what we're talking about. Uh, you've been through all of that, and uh, man, it was nice. It was good. Got rave reviews, and people was coming in and out of it, looking at the house, and and uh, they loved the house. And so finally, somebody put a contract on the house and uh, in the part of the process of the contract and uh, going through the selling process uh, the, the the prospective buyers uh, wanted a home inspection which is wise to do and so they did a home inspection and when they got there they and doing the home inspection um, they found there was a group of termites had got in and had structurally damaged the floor and the, the structural integrity of the floor and so um, uh, you know they had all the paint they had all the carpet clean they had all the walls done and um, and they had redecorated that uh, but but you couldn't see what was down deep inside and what was going on below the surface there. Now they did sell the house, but um, but they learned a valuable lesson in the process. Things aren't always what they seem on the outside. That happens in our own lives too. Some of you uh, can can identify that in your own personal life. And so um, so the question is, when have you been surprised by some, something totally unexpected? That that couple was totally unexpected to find those termites. Um, maybe in your own life there's something totally unexpected, and so we need we're going to talk about that. What do you do when the totally unexpected comes in? How do we stand together in spiritual battle? Because a lot of times what's happening in the spirit realm now, now get me okay. What happens in the spirit realm out there manifests itself here in the physical realm, and so we're going to kind of deal in that area just a little bit today. Okay. Jenny's gonna. Jenny's put together our lesson today, and, and uh, because it's been a um, little busy week for me, and uh, we had a funeral this week, and a couple of things going on. We went out of town to see my sister and her husband, who was in town visiting for a little bit. And so, um, so I appreciate her uh, stepping up and, uh, and and using her teaching gifts to to help put together our lesson today. So she's going to take it from here, okay? Okay. So just like the couple, you know, they're looking at their house thinking everything's okay, only to find out that it's not, okay? So spiritually, things might look okay uh, to the outside world. You might think, hey, spiritually, I got it all together. But below the surface, a war is raging, okay? And so, and that's the way it is in our spiritual lives. No one is immune to conflict, okay? It's not a physical war, but it's a spiritual battle that we're in. And uh, now, good thing is, God doesn't send his children into battle ill-equipped, okay? Uh, he provides a spiritual armor by which we can engage the enemy. And so we're going to look at Ephesians uh, chapter 6, and we're going to start with verses 10 through 13. And James is going to read those for us to get us kicked off and get started here. And these are some of my favorite verses in the scripture. It tells about standing strong uh, in the spiritual battle. And, uh, and and we're not supposed to do it by ourselves, like Jenny just said. Uh, we're not... God doesn't send out there ill-equipped, uh, nor does he send us out there alone into the battle because uh, he's always with us. But he also expects us to have that friendship and that circle around us. Okay, so let's look at Ephesians chapter 6, okay? Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to be looking from verses 10 through 20 today. And so uh, right now, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 13. Paul writes on the inspiration of God's Holy Spirit. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Okay. 
a lot of times in church we think that Jesus uh, saved us to make us a better person. And that's not true. When Jesus saved us to make us a new person, okay? He doesn't want us just to be a better version of what we were. He wants us to be completely new. Mm-hmm. And so the life Jesus calls us to live is not a leisurely stroll down a religious boardwalk. Okay, He didn't call us just to stroll along through life and everything's going to be just hunky-dory. That is not what he saved us for. It is a spiritual battle. So when you became a believer, you joined God's army. Okay, And that doesn't mean you get to sit on the sidelines and do whatever you want to do. You are in his army. It's just like signing that piece of paper and you're in the United States Army. Same thing. So when you become a believer... You join the army, and we are in a battle. Somebody said that um, Christianity is not a cruise ship. Right. It's a battleship. That's right. And so we are on this battleship, not on a cruise ship, okay? Now, as we looked here in Ephesians, as Paul was talking here, Paul is describing warfare, okay? If you look through these verses, you're going to see he's not talking about, you know, you like on a cruise ship. No, he's talking about you're heading into battle. He talked about, you got to put on armor, okay? Armor is for battles, okay? Mm-hmm. He said, stand against the devil, okay? He says, the struggle with spiritual forces of evil. He said, we're struggling with the forces of evil. He said, a call to resist and be prepared, okay? All those terms are things that, you know, if you were in the Army, the Marines or whatever, you would hear those terms. And so he is calling us into battle. He said, this is not... Uh, like Preacher James said, a cruise ship that we're just supposed to be entertained on. We are part of the army now, okay? And Satan is very cunning in the way that he deals with God's children, okay? Satan is smart. He's tricky, okay? And we have to remember that. He knows how to spin things to his advantage and to our demise, okay? Mm -hmm. He will twist God's truth, and he will convince us that God's way is not best. And you go, oh, you may be sitting here. No, he don't do that. Yes, he does. Look in Genesis. What did he do to Eve and Adam? Mm -hmm. Okay. He basically came and said, did God really say this? Are you sure that's what he said? No, you're misunderstood. That's not what he meant. And how many times do you hear people saying that today? You know, you're talking with someone and they're saying, I'm going to go do this. And you're standing there going, oh, but that's against God's word, you know, kind of thing. And they go, oh, you just don't understand that. Okay, that's not what the Bible really says. And they start using those same words. Where do you think they're getting them from? They're getting them from Satan. So he's very cunning, and he will trick us, and he does it all the time, okay? And he does, and he uses the same thing over and over, because it works, okay? Mm-hmm. And so the question comes down, will we believe God, or will we believe the world? Okay? Now, when we say believe the world, we're saying believe Satan. Okay? Will you believe God or will you believe Satan? Okay? And so, God has said certain things. And Satan comes along and contradicts. <coughs> Excuse me. So, who are you going to believe? Okay? Will we live for ourselves or will we live for Christ? Okay? Now, we have that, cho- you know, we got that choice. Am I going to do what I want or am I going to do what Christ says? Okay? And Paul goes on here and he also says, our fight is not against people. Okay, and James, you're going to tell us about that. Verse 12 says, our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Now, who are special, who are, <coughs> we got the cops going on. <laughs> I'm awesome. doing this a moment ago, just a little gnat bug flying around here. They demon and, uh, and so, <laughs> anyway, verse 12 says, our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Now, what is flesh and blood? That are, those are human beings. Uh, notice Paul, Paul says here, as he writes under God's Holy Spirit. That our battle is not flesh and blood, it's not people. Uh, your problem is not your wife, it's not your husband, no matter how much you might want to think they're a problem, uh, not your children, not your boss, um, not your neighbor. Because he goes on and says, our struggle is against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Remember I mentioned early in, Today, a lot of times there's a spiritual battle that manifests in the physical realm. That's what Paul's getting at here. It is not your husband, it's not your wife, it's not your children, it's not your boss, not your neighbor, not that 
person down the street. Not that per- it, it, it's a spirit that's behind that that's growing. And so when you um, bless out that person, you are uh, and curse that person, so to speak. You are cursing God because remember we are made in the image of God. You need to be directing that prayer against that um, that spirit that's working through that person, okay? And that's what Paul is talking about here. It's not people. It's not religions. It's not political uh, people. It's not governments. It's not countries. But we are to be vigilant in fighting against. Notice again, he says, we are not battling flesh and blood. We are not battling people, but we are battling authorities powers of dark world, the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Those are our enemies, and that's where we've got to be at today. And so when you see spiritual battles raging in this world today, uh, you need to be mindful that some of that stuff started manifesting in the spirit realm. Now it's becoming prevalent in the physical realm, and uh, and you need to be praying and asking God to help you stand strong against those spiritual forces, because when you start seeing them raging in the physical realm, man, you've got to move into the spirit realm in a hurry. Look what, listen to what verses 14 through 17 says of Ephesians chapter 6, how we are to do this. It says, stand firm Then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace, in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Notice throughout here, you are having to put this on. God has made them available, but you've got to do something with them, okay? And so, Jenny, pick it up from there. Okay. A lot of times, you know, we think spiritual uh, warfare, uh, we get scared, but this is very serious. It is serious stuff, and, but we have no reason to be afraid, okay? Because what did it say? God has given us this armor, okay, that we are to put on, but we got to put it on, okay? God's not going to come over here and say, here, James, put, I'm going to... Put this helmet on you. No, we have to put it on. Okay? Notice it is the armor of God. It comes from him, and he's putting it there. It's like if, if you was going off the battle. Um, some of you have been in the military, and in the military, they come and say, okay, here's your equipment. Get it. Mm-hmm. You've, got a, you've got a couple of choices. One is go get it and use it like you're supposed to. The other one is, oh, that's dumb, man. That's stupid. I think I can do this on my own. Mm-hmm. Other is, well, let's just go get it, but I'm not going to use it. They won't never know. Um, what, what should you do? Get it and use it like it's designed to, okay? And so that's where we're going with this. Okay. But well, see, God doesn't send us out into battle wearing flip-flops and carrying a broomstick, mm-hmm. okay? And uh, he doesn't do that. Spiritual battle requires spiritual resources. Now, he words, did that with David. Flip-flops. Flip-flops and a, and, a, and, a, and a sling with some rocks. A slingshot, yes. Okay. He wasn't a bruise. <laughs> but yeah, we got to use God's resources, okay? Uh, yeah, it's easy for us to grab our flip-flops in our room and say, I can handle this. No, we got to grab God's resources, what he is providing us to mm-hmm. use. God has promised to supply everything we need to fight the wiles of the enemy. Okay, so you don't have to sit there and go, uh, I need some ammunition over here, you know, kind of thing. God's already provided it. Okay, and so there's several things uh, that he has supplied us with. Okay, the first one is God supplies his protection. Okay, Mm -hmm. we are not to put on our arm, our armor. Okay, I'm not to go to my closet and pull out my armor and put it on, but I am to put on the armor of God. I got to go to his closet and Mm -hmm. get the armor out that he has for me. Okay, so this is not stuff that I can come up with or you can go down to Walmart and buy. Okay, you got to go to God's closet and get the armor to put on. Okay, so he supplies the protection. Okay, and then the second thing God supplies, he supplies his people. Okay, and that's fellow Christians. Okay? That's why we need the church. And he gives us each other. That's right. That's why we need the church. Okay, how would, I mean, you could go interview generals, uh, you know, and that's been into battles and stuff, and say, hey, General, tell me, when you were fighting this battle out here, and there was thousands upon thousands of enemy soldiers over there, did you send one guy out there to fight that, that army? And the General said, no, I didn't do that. 
God doesn't do that either. He doesn't say, oh, there's the enemy over there. All right, James, you preacher, you go take care of it. And all the rest of the church, we're going to stay back here. No, that is not what God does. God does not send one person to fight Satan. And that's why we need each other, okay? Because we've got to stand together. And, uh, and when the enemy sees us standing together arm in arm, then the enemy starts backing up, okay? And so, remember, God supplies his protection. God supplies his people. We are to help each other, and we are to stand together. Okay, James? He's, looking, he's got something in mind here. I was looking here. Um, somewhere in Hebrews chapter 1. I can't find it real quick. Isn't it? Uh, Hebrews 1.14, it says, Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? Uh, you was talking about um, God supplying protection, uh, not only His Holy Spirit in us, giving us guidance and direction, but Hebrews one fourteen, His a personal angel guiding and protecting, and and, and there, you know, uh, He's supplying your help. God will show Himself strong and mighty. He is known as Lord Saba, uh, the God who controls the the heavens and the earth and everything in between. But not only that, um, but God supplies His power. Now it's through the name of Jesus, and He does that. Remember what what Paul said: Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might not your name not your power but in the power of the lord now uh, here's the thing about the power that that um that god gives you it is the same power that raised jesus christ from the dead it's the same power that's working within you and uh, and that empowers you to stand strong and mighty when the devil is attacking okay um yeah it's scary when the when the lion that that wants to eat you up is roaring in your face Arr! now Go off script for just a second. Lion has two two roars. One is a roar that says, "I'm fixing to eat you up," and it's meant to paralyze you so you can he can eat you up. The other one is a roar that says, "These are my people, and do not mess with them. This is my pride. Do not mess with them." The devil, listen to me carefully. The devil that the Bible describes as a lion roaring, roaming around looking for someone to devour. He roars to terrify you. Mm -hmm. Jesus is known, get this, Jesus is known as the lion of the tribe of Judah. And when he roars, he said, these are mine, leave them alone. That's right. And it is imperative that you as a believer understand which roar you're hearing. Mm -hmm. One is going to eat you up. And one is to paralyze you so he can eat you up. The other one is to say, I got you back and nobody's going to touch you. Lion of the tribe of Judah says, I've got you back. Nothing's going to harm you. Nothing's going to come against you. I will take care of it. And we need to be there. Colossians chapter 2 verse 15 is one of my favorite verses in reminding of this. That it says that when Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose from the dead, he made a public spectacle of devils and demons and the forces of hell. Uh, forces of darkness. Now that's the James Way translation, but that's really what it says that that he made a public spectacle of of, um, uh, of of devils and demons when he died on the cross and when he rose again. So Satan has already lost the battle, um, and so he he he's just trying to aggravate everybody. Okay. Now you're not battling trying to get victory. You're battling because you have victory, and so um, and that's why he's attacking you because uh, you have victory, and he wants to tear you down and and um, uh, incapacitate you. He wants to um, neutralize you a little bit, but you've got to stand strong in the power of God and in His might. Um, when we are, you know, you know, and we're going to talk about some practical ways to prepare for battle. But you've got to have this. You've got to stand in truth. You've got to stand covered in righteousness. You've got to stand in the peace that only God. God can give you've got to have you the helmet of salvation which causes you the head to be screwed on rightly you've got to have that that um that sword of the spirit which is the word of God you've got to have that shield of faith which will extinguish the flaming darts of the evil one okay but there's another piece that we often fall so short of we often overlook in fact when people talk about the spirit the spiritual armor of God they stop there but there's another one that is so vital in in Ezekiel chapter 37 when when uh, uh, God took Ezekiel out into the gar into the into the um, valley of dry bones what did he do he said prophesy to the bones and they did and they all came together 
together, flesh and sinews and everything. The bodies came back together. Uh, but but he said they was dead bodies just laying all over the place. And then he said prophesy to the wind. What happened? Then God's breath blew down. And that's what we've. That's what the next part about. You know about. Um, we we don't need to overlook the prayer part of spiritual warfare. That is the breath of God blowing into us. Okay. Listen to what Paul writes in Ephesians chapter six, verses eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. He says, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. And with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Then he says, pray for me also. Why? Because uh, he needs that support. Okay, Pray for me also that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given to me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in change. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Okay, so we are to stand in the gap with one another through prayer. Prayer is for for one another is our greatest weapon in spiritual warfare. Okay, so this is our greatest weapon, just like uh, James was saying. And so you you're sitting here going, right, how should I pray? Okay, you say I pray all the time now. So how should I pray? Okay, there's several different ways that we are to pray that Paul is uh, giving us instruction here about, and. Uh, James, you're going to do the first one. Yeah. Some of you, you pray, and it's a great practice to do, uh, praying um, uh, before a meal. And, uh, the, you know, um, some people say, yeah, if you, you know, the way my people cook, uh, you'll be praying too, you know. <laughs> um, you know, uh, what should you do? You pray, as you pray before your meal, you know, God, I thank you so much for providing this for us and, and the strength. But you need to pray all the time, not just when you're at church, not just before a meal, but, but praying should be like breathing. You, you, you breathe out and you breathe in. And, uh, and so you need to be praying all the time. Every, you know, you say, well, how can I do that? Got to be in my prayer closet. I'm not going to get any work. Well, what, what that means is, as you're going down the road, here, here's something I do. When we're going down the road and there's an ambulance or a fire engine or something another going by with lights flashing, you know what we do? We pray, even as we're driving, uh, God bless them, keep them safe, uh, God be with them as they get to where they got to go, help them when they go into the hospital, the right doctors and the nurses and all will be there. And, and all. That, that's praying all the time. As you see something happening, pray and, and speak, into, speak life into that, okay? And so pray all the time. So we're to pray all the time, but we're also to pray in the spirit. I know you're going, oh, what does that mean? Okay. <laughs> and what it's talking about here is prayer is a form of worship. Okay, So when we're praying, we are worshiping God. And God desires that his people worship him. Okay, And so when you're praying, you are worshiping God. So you are praying in the Spirit then. You need to be uh, worshiping Him. You need to be asking God, what do you want in this situation? What is your will for this situation? And, you know, show me. Tell me. Okay? And then that way you can pray in the Spirit with God. You know, as you're praying, so anybody ever had this experience? You've, you've had this, I imagine. Also, you know, when you're praying and, and you go, all of a sudden there's a thought popping in your mind. I need to be praying for this. Right. Spirit praying. Mm -hmm. God's putting that there, saying pray about this situation. And so that's praying and part of praying in the Spirit. You need to pray with an engaged mind. That's what Jennifer was also alluding to there a little bit. Um, as I talk with friends and families, and uh, and not only locally but around the world, uh, and, and somebody said, but James, would you pray for me? Um, if, I'm, if I'm able to, I'll write it down. Why? So when I'm praying for it, I can pray specifically for that need, okay? And, uh, you know, and so, you know, I keep a prayer journal. I don't exactly do that, but, um, but I do write down requests and, and things like that. You want to pray for your friends. Um, maybe they have a need that you know of. Maybe, um, they're sick, maybe they're struggling with some needs, maybe they have rent coming up, maybe they got some conflict going on in their life. Pray for the sick. Not just to endure to get through it, but God to get glory by healing and right. and 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 do that. I had somebody say, "You can, can you really pray for the sick and to, to be healed?" Yes. The scripture says to do that. Pray for the lost that they'll get that they'll be under conviction and and that they'll come to be saved. Pray for your missionaries that that are around the world. Um, and you know Southern Baptist, we um, we have the corporate program and uh, we have the mission offerings that um, send missionaries out. And so you know we want to do that. Pray for your church leaders. Those are some uh, great ways to do it. Pray for them. Call them by name. Don't just say, God, just bless our, just bless our church. You know, call specific things out about your church, okay? Engage your mind. Think as you do it, okay? And so, just like James just said, you know, we're to pray for the church. Uh, we're to pray for the physical needs as well as the spiritual. Uh, most of the time, we don't have any trouble praying for physical needs. We'll say, oh, God, help Bubba get a job. Bubba, uh, you know, God, help Bubba. He's sick, you know. 
Oh, and we can, you know, or he needs food, he needs a car, whatever. And those are all physical needs, but we need to pray for the spiritual needs. And you may be going, how do we do that? You pray for that person. You say, God, oh, you know, Bubba told me that he's, you know, has a person at work that just really gets on his case and it aggravates him and, and just gets him all aggravated every day. Well, you could pray for Bubba and say, God, help Bubba to be strong at work. Help, you know, put a spiritual protection around him because we done talked about, you know, it's not the person that's uh, aggravating Bubba. It's the spirit that's working through mm-hmm. that person. So you can ask God to bind up that spirit so it's not aggravating Bubba. So we can pray that each other will be strong, that we'll grow spiritually, that we can pray and ask that people will come to know the Lord and, and then start growing up. You know, and so there's all different kind of things that we can pray for, for that person. And we need to be doing it for our church. And remember, the church is the people, not the building. Okay? And we need to pray that we'll have the boldness to go and speak the, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. You don't, you don't have to do it in, in big, deep theological ways. You don't have to do it like I do or Jenny might do. Do it as God uh, leads you to do it. You know, just a simple, you know, God loves you. He has a plan for your life. Um, and, and share what God has done in your life and how did you come to know Jesus? People can't argue with your experience. And so, uh, you know, pray that, that, uh, that we will advance the gospel of Jesus Christ. And another thing that we have to pray for, we're to pray for the persecuted believers. Okay, we have believers all over the world that are being persecuted. Uh, some of them are losing their homes, their jobs. Uh, some of them, they become believers. Their family has nothing else to do with them. Uh, others, they're being hunted down, thrown in prison. They're being killed. Okay? And so those are our, per- and we have persecuted believers even here in America. Uh, we're starting to see it more and more. Uh, I'll give you an example of, because I have been persecuted, and you're going like, okay, what has happened, right? Several months ago, I applied for a job here in St. George, okay? And I was told the reason I didn't get the job was because my husband's a pastor. Okay, you said, well, that doesn't, that's not really persecution, but it is. I was refused work because he is a pastor. That is one of the first steps, you know, of the camp. You may have lost your job because you're a believer. You may not have got that promotion because you are a believer. Uh, you may not, you may have lost friends because you're a believer. Okay. And so that is persecution. Okay. And there's different levels of it. Some of it, you may not ever be asked to, you know, give your life for God, but you might. Okay, and so there's different uh, forms of persecution, and there's people all over the world that's being persecuted, and we need to be praying for them uh, for the stand that they're taking. That's right, you know, because that's one reason we need the church. That way we can pray for one another in all kind of stuff, okay? And that's one of the greatest things that we have uh, to do. And it's a, it's a great weapon of warfare. Again, you know, a lot of times people that do those first uh, six pieces, they forget the prayer. But the prayer is the lifeblood of God and the, the wind of God, the breath of God blowing into you, okay? And so, uh, just like James said, you know, praying it for one another, our fellow believers, is our the greatest support that we can give. That's why, you know, it's so important that we pray for our, our missionaries. Our missionaries say uh, they're in other countries that, and we pray for them on their birthdays and they said they can tell that we are praying for them on that day. And so we need to pray for each other and give that support. And our greatest weapon in spiritual warfare is prayer. Okay. And we need to pray for each other to be strong, that we'll stand together and uh, that we'll, you know, to fight the enemy. So let's pray for one another as we stand in this spiritual battle that we are in. James, okay. Okay. Very good. And she's done a good job putting it together and uh, giving us guidance for today. And uh, thank you, Jenny, for doing that. Uh, we look forward to begin teaching here in a week or so um, what you do best in the body of Christ. Uh, watch it on Facebook and, uh, um, you know, and uh, get your copy of the book when you get to the church. And uh, uh, the other thing is, um, if you have, if you don't come to Old St. George Baptist Church, order it online, brucebugby.com, and look down through the resource. You have to look under the resource tab. And it's down toward the end and not because it's um, um, unimportant. It's not. Uh, he just had a lot of things grouped together in there. And, uh, and so you want to get you a copy of that and be ready to start uh, here in probably two, three weeks. Okay. Uh, what did you say? What we're going to do over the next couple of weeks? Don't know yet. Okay. <laughs> and so, but anyway, um, we love you. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for loving us so very much. 
Thank you that in prayer we can support one another, we can encourage one another. We're not coming to tell you anything that you don't already know. But Father, it is our humbling ourselves and our our submitting ourselves to you and saying, God, we have a limited view of what's happening, but you have an infinite view. You see the beginning from the end. We only see the middle that we are in. And so, Father, we ask that you'll give us guidance and direction. And, Father, as we pray for one another, I pray, Father, that you'll guide us in how we ought to pray. I pray, Father, that we'll lift up one another and encourage one another. Help us remember that we're not battling uh, flesh and blood. We're not battling humans. We're not battling that husband or father or or mother, or wife, or children, or boss, or whoever we might run into. That's flesh and blood. We're battling against uh, spiritual spiritualities, the principalities, and spiritual forces, and and so forth. And Father, we are we ask that you'll give us guidance in how we ought to pray. Now, Father, I pray as we um, uh, end up this series, uh, Father, that you will use this series. And, Father, as there will be times that people will come back and look at it again, that you will use it in their lives as well. Thank you so much for giving us the church. Thank you for giving us one another. And, Father, now may you be glorified. May you edify us and strengthen us. And, then, Father, may your great kingdom be advanced as we testify of the life-changing God, who is real and true and takes care of us in great mighty ways. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.